What is going on guys, welcome to the Mark Flyer, welcome to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator tutorial with me. Uh, where today we are going to talk about the tutorial on doing takeoff procedure inside the Airbus 320. And of course we will be using the guidance from the Airbus SOP or the FCOM as well. So we try to do it as quick as we can. In the meantime, provide you with as much as info as I can over here. So if you are first time coming to the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like the video. And I hope you find it useful. So without further ado, let's proceed with the uh, tutorials. So today we are going to do our takeoff at Tokyo Haneda Airport, runway 05. We are going to go through on the setup at the aircraft first before we discuss furthermore on the procedure. So you can see now our current position is at uh, holding point Delta 2 of Tokyo Haneda Airport, which is the second intersection for runway 05 departure. So for the setup, let's start with the uh, flight management system. Uh, we have from the init patch, just a rough planning from Tokyo Haneda to Tokyo Osaka over here and then cost index just roughly put 45 uh, cruise flight level will be flight level assume flight level 340 since we are heading to the uh, western side and then on the flight plan patch you have the SID being set up and I've chosen the SID would be uh, Lexus 3 departure for runway 05 so you can see the procedure here is basically is being set up inside the uh, flight management system and then inside your navigation display you can see the setup as well uh, however we are going to do a bit of changes over here uh, as you can see the constraint over here showing on the ND is not really that accurate since if you compare to the chart we have the uh, 500 feet constraint is not at position tango tango 501 but it's set over here 500 feet so I'm just gonna leave it there uh, since this one we are going to focus on the takeoff procedure you have this over waypoint lockup is 4003 but over here inside the flight management system is showing plus 5000 feet which is the altitude constraint that it should be so nevertheless we are going to uh, just leave it there for now and on the performance page i have uh, inserted flaps one for our departure uh, the flap setting is basically depends on a lot of factors such as the runway length available uh, and then your wind component, your temperature, your airport elevation, all these kind of factors to be considered in deciding what kind of flap for you to take off which normally we are computing it using our uh, computer electronic flight bag for this case since we are taking off for runway 05 with our takeoff distance available close to 2500 meters so I think flaps 1 shouldn't be a problem since our takeoff weight we are expecting around 56 ton as well so uh, I've selected flaps 1 and then the trimmable horizontal stabilizer which you can refer to the website i've shown here uh, the link is down in the description below basically we are just going to uh, get a rough figure on uh, trimmable horizontal stabilizer as well as your flex temperature uh, for the v1 vr v2 which we are going to use the uh, calculation compute by the flight management system inside the flight simulator itself so now we have flaps 1 uh, 1.4 up on the trimmable horizontal stabilizer being inserted uh, flex temperature is 68 and then your engine acceleration altitude will be i'll just put it here 1530 feet for the v1 vr v2 as i mentioned earlier just gonna give you a click here then you can see you have your uh, v1 vr and v2 speed coming up calculated by the uh, flight simulator itself transition altitude it varies with the airport uh, like for example today we are at Tokyo haneda so you can see our transition altitude will be 14,000 feet just put it here 14,000 feet and thrust reduction and acceleration altitude default is being 1,500 feet so thrust reduction is meaning that once you're reaching this selected altitude 1,530 feet you're going to see a lever climb flashing on your primary flight display and then there is the time where you're going to bring your thrust lever from either toga or flex down to the climb the 10 you have over here so meaning the aircraft will proceed with the climb mode and of course you have your flat retraction speed and slack retraction speed same goes for your clean speed or what we know as the window speed inside the airbus 320 so we are going to see later on on the speed tag here since we are using a flat one takeoff so you are going to see a s speed slack retraction speed over here later on so which I'm going to show you of course don't forget to set up on your zero fuel weight and zero fuel weight CG so that's all with the setup for the flight management system for the flight control unit as usual before takeoff 
constraint to on so that you can see your altitude or any speed constraint and then uh, correct barrel reference is being set you have your flight director on the VOR ADF toggle switch normally we are going to set it to VOR since we are not expecting to use any NDB for our departure today and initial altitude will be 5000 feet this one comes along with the ATC clearance when you're first getting it before the pushback on the overhead panel we have only beacon light and then the nav local lights on which we are going to turn on all the other lights once we enter the runway another thing we are going to do for the takeoff today is to off the packs uh, once we clear to enter the runway this action is basically to improve the aircraft performance when using toga truss like for our case today we are using a flex takeoff selecting the packs off or APU bleed on will reduce the uh, takeoff and exhaust gas temperature and thus reduce the maintenance cost so it's all about increasing the lifespan of the engine and then we are going to on back the packs once we have reached our thrust reduction altitude in a sequence packs 1 with an interval of 10 seconds then followed by packs 2 this is for the passenger comfort since we are going to pressurize the aircraft so that is what we are going to do later on Alright, so this is just a go through on what we are going to do. Let's go to the before takeoff checklist. We have flight control check. So basically, this one is performed by both the pilot before you clear for lineup. It's just to check on the uh, your elevator, make sure they are all fully working, and they have speed brake as well, your ailerons, and of course your rudder. So after done by the both side, pilot flying and pilot monitoring, then flight control check, flight instrument cross check as well check. Briefing, make sure there's no changes, confirm. Flap setting, so you have uh, configuration 1 plus F. So three places to check is the lever itself and then your performance patch, you have your flaps one being set. Of course, your uh, on the upper ECAM, you have 1 plus F set as well. So V1, VR, V2 flap stem to cross check on the uh, flight management system insertion. Uh, on the primary flight display, you have your V1 and V2 speed as well. On the upper ECAM, you have your flex temperature 68 being set. ATC to set. So ATC is over the first officer side. Uh, don't forget to set it to auto and then altitude reporting to on. Your TCA selector set to above. ECAM and more. Our spoilers. Don't forget to arm your spoilers. Just put it up. So you have takeoff, no blue. And before takeoff checklist, down to a line. Let's say we're clear for line RMA05. Just turn on all the lights. Set landing lights on as well. And for the nose light, set to tap C initially, since we are not clear for takeoff yet. And three things to check. Check on your approach path, make sure there's no arrival aircraft, and then make sure there's no stop bar light over here. And of course, another thing to check is your runway. Make sure it's clear, but we have one aircraft here. Nevertheless, still our clearance is granted. Let's proceed with the lineup. So while proceed with the uh, lineup on the runway, you can go ahead with the uh, below the line, which is your takeoff runway. So takeoff runway, what you can check is on the runway marking here, you have runway 05, and of course on your flight management system, runway 05 is being set. Another place you can check is basically the uh, on your heading indicator here. You can see the aircraft is turning towards uh, a heading of 050. So you have runway 05 confirm uh, cabin crew to advise on cabin crew and then TCAS we have already set it to TARA which is traffic advisory and uh, resolution advisory engine mode selector so just gonna leave it to norm since we are not expecting to take off uh, under any heavy water injection situation so just leave it to norm and of course tax as mentioned early on just off both the packs. So we have packs off and before takeoff checklist completed. Alright, so for now we go through on the normal takeoff pattern as depicted from inside the Airbus FCOM. So on the MACDO setting, we have already done it just now. Uh, same goes for the FCU setting as well. And guys, I've just tried the uh, departure a few times and apparently there's something wrong with the flight director here. As you can see, our uh, standard instrument departure is basically straight ahead and then track to Tango Tango 501 so it's basically a right turn after airborne a slight right turn but the flight director is commanding a left turn I have no idea why so uh, nevertheless today we are going to just follow on the runway heading we have here today which is 050 
and then we are going to proceed with the takeoff procedures. First thing first, you are going to do once you get the clearance for takeoff, uh, you are going to turn on the nose lights to take off, and then release your parking brake, hold on your tow brakes, and then push your side stick half down. And we are talking about normal takeoff for this case. We are not talking about if you are taking off in a tailwind situation or any crosswind if they're stronger than 20 knots. Uh, which we will discuss about it in a future video so for now we we'll just focus on the normal takeoff procedure so just half side stick nose down the reason behind it is basically to counter any pitch up moment with the increasing of uh, takeoff thrust later on and then in the meantime uh, you are basically applying a bit of pressure on your nose gear so that the directional control under low speed is more effective so while doing that holding your brakes and uh, applying half side stick down so you're going to apply your thrust n1 to 50 percent Make sure both the engines are stabilized and then once this is confirmed, stabilized, release your toe brake and then you apply to your takeoff thrust. So and then you are going to neutralize your side stick between 80 knots to 100 knots generally. And another thing we are going to check, as you can see here, 80 knots is stating power check. So meaning the pilot monitoring is going to cross check on both the engines and one figure. 100 knots will be a standard call out. This one is a challenge and response uh, by the pilot monitoring and pilot flying. So uh, in case if there's any unreliable airspeed, so decision can be made accordingly. And then once reaching your V1 on your speed tape, it will be showing by a blue line and then followed by your VR, which is your rotate speed. It will be showing by a blue color donut, which you are going to see later. Uh, so once reaching your VR, you are going to slowly bring your pitch up to plus 15. That one is our target pitch uh, under normal flight scenario uh, at a rate of 3 degree per second. So in the meantime, you can follow on the flight director, which is going to be SRS mode or known as the speed reference system. So which means the uh, aircraft is commanding a pitch with refer to its uh, speed, which is uh, V2 plus 10 knots as discussed earlier on. With the uh, speed V2 plus 10 knots, the pitch can go up to even 18 degree maximum. Especially if your aircraft is light and then the engine is powerful. For new aircraft some more, we might able to see it later. And of course, once aircraft is established on positive climb, we are going to raise the gear. And this one is just a guideline. As long as your radio altimeter is showing an increasing in figure, which is going to two digit, for example, then you can call for positive climb. Then we are going to continue follow on the speed reference system all the way until your thrust reduction altitude or your acceleration altitude. Like for our case, we have set thrust reduction altitude uh, being 1530 feet and acceleration altitude at 1530 feet as well. So passing 1530 feet, we are going to see a uh, lever climb flashing. We are going to bring the thrust to climb V10 and then let the aircraft accelerate and then climb at the same time. So once the speed increasing up to S speed, we are going to retract the flaps. Once that is done, and let the aircraft accelerate until the uh, Econ climb speed, which is 250 knots for our case. So that's all we need to know for the uh, takeoff. So now let's start the takeoff roll. Assume our takeoff clearance is granted. So first thing first to set your lights to take off, your nose light to take off, and then uh, release your parking brake, hold your brakes, push your side stick half down, apply thrust to 50%, stabilize, release brakes, man flex 68, accelerate strong way, go to thrust speed. See the speed is increasing towards your S speed. It's passing S speed. Call for flap zero. Speed check. Flap zero. Then press four on the. Trust climb. Open climb. 
up to 5000 wood so passing 10 seconds on your X2 speed out star now you have your landing gear is up so don't forget to disarm your spoilers and then off your nose slide which is the runway cover flight and your nose slide as well and you may proceed with the after takeoff time checklist uh, landing gear up flaps retracted and hex on and after takeoff time checklist down to the line that's it guys, we are safety airborne and that's all for the video for today if you find it useful, as usual, don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you have any suggestion on the current video or the upcoming video, feel free to leave a comment down below and with that being said, I shall see you guys in the next video very soon